In this next section, we'll briefly discuss an algorithm that tries to somehow beat Knuth Morris Pratt in a specific sense. And that's the, the Boyer Moore algorithm. KMP is essentially optimal because uh, it has the worst case complexity of big O of n plus m character comparisons. And we already discussed last time that this is uh, already required to just read the text and the pattern. So how could you possibly improve on that? Now, the point is that this is only optimal for the worst case. Um, I'm ignoring that we're living in, in the big O land, so there's also constant factors that you can improve. Uh, but that's not what I'm getting at in this section. The point is it's about the worst case. Whereas for many instances of texts and patterns, you can do much better. And here's a, a concrete extreme example where you need way fewer comparison or character comparisons than the knuth morris pratt algorithm would use. Uh, the text is just all A's, the pattern is just all X's, so without looking at it much, you can immediately say there won't be any matches. Now, of course, the algorithm uh, can't just uh, look at the text as a whole. It will has to have to examine individual characters, as would you if that was uh, 10 million characters. But it's still enough to check um, for these four positions and notice that there's a mismatch to certify that there's no, um, no matches in the entire text. And the point is that these, uh, these four mismatches, these four guesses that are not matches, they cover the entire text, and that's enough. If there's no match that can possibly overlap any of these positions, then we're done. And notice that we didn't actually look at all the text characters, and that's totally fine in many cases. The Boyer-Moore algorithm tries to exploit this, this observation more systematically. Um, and in particular, you see what was useful here was using the last character as the check first. And that's, um, that's the key essence of the Boyer-Moore algorithm. Instead of trying to do the comparisons from, from left to right, you do them right to left. Uh, now, that causes some, some problems further on that we'll, we'll have to fix in the rest of the section. But the good thing about this is if we're somewhat lucky, then uh, a single comparison eliminates an entire guess. And uh, we can shift the pattern all the way behind uh, that position. Now, that can go wrong in the very same way as the brute force algorithm sometimes goes wrong. And here's a concrete worst case example where you see you have to do all the n times m comparisons if you do just that, just compare right to left. So to avoid that, we have to use something like in the knuth morris pratt algorithm, the failure of links. We have to somehow find a way to exploit the knowledge we already uh, gained during the comparisons. Uh, and that turns out to be roughly as tricky as for KMP, but we want to keep the right to left order. So instead, there's, um, there's two new rules that often work super well. <laughs> OK. Uh, if, if anyone in the live stream, live stream can confirm that a video is working fine, YouTube complains. But the recording should be fine. So maybe that's all we need. So the two rules are, are called the bad character jumps. That's um, if we have a mismatch at a certain position. There'll be more detailed examples um, on this in a second. So there's a certain mismatch in the text. Now, if our pattern does not at all contain this character C, then any such overlapping placement of the pattern uh, can't be a match. So we can shift it entirely behind that character. Or if the pattern contains the character C, we can put that so that it aligns with the text. Um, and we can shift it to the last occurrence of C in the pattern. That's the, that's the simple, simple version. Um, 
So let's do, um, well, so last occurrence in the pattern. And uh, if there's no occurrence at all, then we just say it's, it's uh, at the front. So that often helps, uh, especially if you have a large alphabet, then maybe the pattern doesn't even contain all symbols. Uh, but that, that alone um, wouldn't save us um, in, in all cases. So um, we have a second heuristic, which is a little more subtle. In the general setting, we have a text, and we have some position of the pattern where we have some characters in alignment. Right? And then there's a mismatch at this position. We compare right to left. There's a mismatch at this position, so we now have to shift somehow the pattern to avoid uh, that mismatch. What we'd like to keep is this matched part. It would, be, uh, it would be useless to shift the pattern in a way where you have a mismatch between that part that was already good before. So if there's any position here, where we don't have a match between that position and the position in the green part. There's no use in trying that. That's what the good suffix heuristic uh, tries to do. We, we shift our pattern forward if there's a mismatch so that the part that we've already seen in the text so far is in alignment with the pattern at this point. Uh, if, you, um, if you ignore how to compute these two heuristics, the overall code is relatively simple. So that's why that's, that's um, on the slide first. We go through the text once. Uh, we start at the right of the pattern, so with the last index in P. As long as we haven't reached the start, so we haven't found um, the entire pattern yet, we check the next character. If there's a match, then we go to the previous position in um, in the pattern. And if we reach by that point, the beginning of the pattern, so we've jumped over P0, then we found a match at this position. And otherwise, we have to shift the pattern forward by a, a certain amount. And what we take is the better of the two heuristics. They both tell us, OK, there's no point in shifting the pattern less than so and so many positions. And so we can take the maximum of those two guesses. Now, here's a few more concrete examples of the two heuristics. And um, uh, I'll leave it then uh, with that. So if we have the pattern uh, Aldo and where's Waldo is the text, then here in these first two characters, we try to match first from the right. We compare with R. Now, R does not occur at all in the pattern, so we can shift it all the way behind the current guess. OK? Uh, similarly, in the second step, so W doesn't occur in the pattern, so we can shift it all the way behind it. And then, well, at this point, we find the, the pattern here. That's the standard, standard checks. Uh, here's another example that shows the more subtle case. We try to find more in boy or more. Um, we first align it. Okay, we first align it here, and we try to find. So there's a mismatch with the R. Now we try to find the last occurrence of R in the pattern. That's here. So we can only shift the pattern so that this last occurrence is in alignment with the R. That's what the uh, bad character heuristic at least tells us. And then we keep checking. So here again, um, M. The last occurrence is right at the beginning, so we bring the last occurrence in alignment with that position. And then again, we can check. So the last occurrence function in, in detail is just the position where a character occurs last, or minus one if it doesn't occur at all. Uh, here's an example for, for that pattern, and um, I won't go into details. It's, it's very easy to compute this in code. You basically scan through the pattern once uh, and just uh, update 
for all occurrences where you find something, you, you update the numbers. Um, so I'll, I'll skip the detailed code there. Let's have a brief look at the second heuristic, which is a little, a little more subtle. There's two different cases. That's a good suffix heuristic. Um, if we have this kind of pattern, cells, shells, and uh, we have this text here, Sheila sells shells. Uh, the first, first guess would be this, and we start comparing from the right until we find this mismatch. Now there's this good suffix of the pattern, this part that we found, and we want to keep that. If we realign the pattern, we don't want to destroy matches there. So we try to check else. If I just shift by one or two characters, there's a mismatch. The only other occurrence of else is here. So I can shift all the way through so that these, this other occurrence of else, of this good suffix in the pattern, is in alignment with the text positions we've had before. OK? If you shift by any amount that's, that's less far to the right, then you will have a mismatch at one of these positions. That's what the good suffix uh, means. Now, this was the case where we could find the entire suffix within the pattern. Uh, there's a second case, which happens um, with this pattern. OK, again, um, a text example. And we start scanning from the right with matches. So the good suffix is food. And then there's a mismatch. Now, I can shift the pattern. Uh, but there's no other occurrence of food in, uh, in the pattern itself. The only thing I can find is a suffix of the good suffix that occurs as a prefix of the pattern. So the last two letters of food are at the beginning. So if the first case doesn't apply, we don't find the good suffix at all in the pattern, then maybe we can find part of it at the beginning. And so we can bring the first two letters in alignment with the last two of the good suffix. Uh, and these letters are essentially skipped over, or um, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't use those. OK? That's the two cases. You can either find the good suffix entirely within the pattern at, a, at another position, or you find the part of the pattern of the good suffix in the pattern. And if, if so, it has to be at the beginning. So in both cases, um, there's the longest suffix of the matched suffix of the good suffix that occurs earlier in P. And these are the two cases. Now, um, there's, there's two cases of how to compute the shift from those, again, depending on which of those two applies. I don't, I don't want to go into these details, especially because we are not doing any exam questions on this. Uh, the, key, the key idea is just what you see in the example. You try to find the part that you matched in the pattern again, and the last occurrence of that uh, is where you shift to. Now, for this one, you may, um, you may wonder how you can efficiently compute this. And that's one of the cases where what I said at the very last slide of the previous section becomes true. Something like the, the failure function of the KMP algorithm allows you to compute uh, these, these shifts in detail in, in linear time. Um, the algorithm is a, little, is a little tricky. It's not long code, but it's, it's a bit finicky to understand. Uh, you have to do lots of uh, index arithmetic. Uh, so again, um, this doesn't apply. The whole, chap the whole section is not part of the exam. Um, that was from when, when it was covered. OK, that's the Boyer Moore algorithm. Uh, apart from the pre-processing part, I've shown you detailed code. Um, it's surprisingly tricky to analyze this algorithm. The worst case running time indeed is uh, essentially best possible, but only if the pattern does not occur in the text. Uh, this is not obvious, but uh, people have, have done this. Um, the way I described it, the worst case overall is still n times m if uh, we need to report all occurrences. Um, 
the reason for that is that the heuristics don't always allow you to shift um, further, and uh, they don't keep track of, of matched parts in all cases. Um, that's that's part of the part of the com complications that we uh, got ourselves into by doing this um, right to left checking. If you remember in KMP, all we needed to remember was how many characters of the pattern have we seen in the text up to this point. That was a single number, and then essentially that was the state of our string matching automaton. Now with Boy or More, it could happen that you had a few mismatches, you had a few matches here, then there was a mismatch. Now you shift the pattern over with the good suffix heuristic, so you have a few matches here. And then you start matching from the end again. Uh, so it would be kind of wasteful to check those four matches again. But the way I presented the algorithm, it doesn't remember that it has checked these. It is smart enough to not shift uh, by fewer positions than are needed to imply that we have matches here, but it doesn't remember the matches. Um, and it's a bit more tricky because they're in the middle of the pattern now. So it's more intricate bookkeeping, and uh, the code gets a bit annoying. So you can implement Boy or More um, to uh, achieve the same worst case time, but it's, it's much more tricky. Uh, so most of the time when people use this algorithm, they don't. They uh, kind of just accept this worst case, but also accept that typically on, on something like English text, uh, Boy or More only has to look at a quarter of the characters. And so it's far away from this worst case, and it's usually a good deal faster than KMP. Just because most of the time you can skip over entire parts of the text because uh, the pattern doesn't even contain a character or so.